Hey folks, Harry here and welcome back to the Hardcore Survival. In today's episode, I build a bee farm to get some honeycomb and honey bottles, set myself up the task of getting some wither skulls, and eventually take on the wither to get the beacon behind me. And the beacon is to be used for next episode, but I take on the massive task of building a huge trading hall. So let's get to it. And that is where today's episode comes in. The honeycomb farm is going to be crucial for things like candles, which is going to be a massive part of the build. And the fight, uh, that's for a beacon. We need a beacon so we can mine a lot of deep sleep. Trust me, a lot of deep sleep. Because once you see what we have planned for the next episode, you're going to realise how much deep sleep I'm going to need. Like, we're talking thousands of deep sleep here. Going to be a grind, but it'll be worth it in the end. So, let's get started. And this is where we start. Actually, no. This is where the farm is going to be for the honeycomb. I have over here this wee tiny little field. Now, I designed this this way because i wanted it to have beehives in it and the beehives are going to be the thing that pollinates the flowers of the the fields here and it was just kind of like a fun we thought to have it here so that we can get all this growing the farm is going to be here but it's not going to be visible it's going under here so i've already got some stuff here one thing i don't have is beehives now, an issue with bees are they like to wander and run around and this, uh, what was that? Right, is you that? Oh, uh, the campfires, huh? Okay. So, pretty sure the bees around here are going to have disappeared because, well, we've been we've been working so they've probably all disappeared i need to go and find a whole load more now i want to keep these oh there's a bee in this oh grab it so i have money money hood so i have mini hood installed which will show me if there is actually bees inside a hive which it just did there and i've got another one here with three two two in it that's the only two i no 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 there's one over here yeah this one here i don't think it has bees in it though. No. I think they've all left and died. Did I pick that up? I did pick that up. So yeah, I am going to go for a wee wander. Hopefully try and find some beehives with a lot of bees in them. And I have a lot of forest here. So it shouldn't be too hard. So let's get going. Alright, so I've got four hives there. I was able to get a few extra bees to put in them. So I'm heading back home so that we can actually get started with getting more bees because i want 18 beehives full of bees so all where am how do i get out no oh, right there okay no i'm lost again hello that was the right way ah there we go so i want 18 beehives all filled with three bees so I'm going to need to get a load of bone meal, one of these, and go and breed up some bees. All right, so we have the breeding area set up. I just need a lot of honeycomb now to make some beehive things. I can't remember what they're actually called. Because these, what are these actually? Bee nests. These are nests. Yes, the hives are the ones that are made by people basically. So to get them, we need honeycomb. We need three honeycomb, which these give at least three every single time. And then we take it to a crafting table with some wood and we can easily make some beehives. Now, to make sure that this actually works, these trap doors are here. And basically they stop any of the bees coming out from the front, which is how they exit the beehives. They can enter from any direction, but they can only exit from the front. The trapdoor stops that. So I can easily breed these up, fill these all up and get lots of bees in the beehives. All right, I have all 18. We are now ready for this farm. So let's get building.
all right that's bee farm done dusted completely fixed hopefully this this is worrying me I, that might be a lost thing but i don't get why because all tests this never happened that's some spare ones i had but yeah this is the the shear filling area so i can go in here with more shears i should be pretty full yeah pretty much full i will probably never need to worry about shears again the problem now is my water balls because they need to be completely filled for this to work for honey bottles so i'm gonna need a lot a lot of glass and i just don't have enough at all and it would take me too long trading at the moment to do that but i do want to quickly just watch over this make sure it actually works again and no more happens to this oh it's night time i was wondering why it was not working okay i'm getting some in so that's absolutely fine and this seems to be working yeah now the reason i do have the two blocks worth of flowering azalea leaves is because i found when they come out to one block they kind of just sort of all bunch up and don't work and then some of them disappear into a hive whereas with the two they expand out and they're able to get more flowers done quicker which means they can go in and out a lot quicker that's just something i tested and seen worked as you can see there's four bees all in a row getting a lot of pollen and yeah it just works so much better but yeah that's the farm our candles will be infinite now i just i need to get on with the next part all right so for the next part we are actually heading back to that nether fortress we discovered in the last episode it's got several crossroads which should be excellent conditions for us to get some weather skeletons to spawn now, weather skeletons also have a notorious low drop rate for the skulls. And we're looking at about 2.5% chance with a looting 3 sword. I have a looting 2. That means we are going to need to kill a lot of these guys. I think it's about 120 on average with a looting 3. So I would say probably 240 with a looting 2. We've got a long road ahead of us. So let's get started. done it we have got three weather skulls i don't i don't think it took me 120 withers though 81 that that is amazing like the average 120 with looting three i mean we've done really well then that's even me like 
completely flattening this whole thing out just to try and up the rates of them. But yeah, I mean, having this all leveled out just helped with the spawn rates and things like that. So I have got a whole load of stuff I can take home with me as well. I think I need to get some soul sand actually, and then I can try and take on the weather. One thing I do want to try and get is a smite 5 sword or smite 4 if possible. So, oh, it's smite 4. <gasps> that would have been an amazing sword. Like that, fighting the weather skeletons would have been perfect. Like I'm actually kind of raging. We've got a smite 4, that's going to do a lot more damage to the weather itself, which is really nice. Right, so we're going to cheese with the weather. So I am going to come up to here and we're going to go straight all the way up. Bunch of ladders here. Uh, that one, that one. So we come all the way up to the top of the nether here. And we're going to go and look for a specific cluster. So this has to be accessible for us. Oh, I forgot obsidian, but that's fine. We will go get it in a wee second. But... So it should sit about the same level that we're mining on and it should be a cluster of five. One, two, three, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. This right here. This is the left. This is, this is what we're looking for. Now I don't have obsidian handy, but this is where we need to be. So I'm going to go quickly, jump back down and get the obsidian and come back up. Now there is issues with this and the fact that the weather could escape so i want to be extremely lucky and hope that it doesn't but sometimes it just happens oh i'm an idiot uh <laughs> right i need a area that will keep me kind of safe and secure yeah, this is fine. So I have a golden apple with me to try and help if anything goes wrong. But it shouldn't. Like the only thing that can go wrong is I've, I've done this wrong and it flies through the top. And it didn't. Nice. Awesome. Right, so I just need my night four. And we take it all the way down till it's this side and then we can just easily come in the gap. Well that's done. <laughs> and that's how easy the weather is these days. Yeah, I want to try and set up a system where I can kill hundreds of these as quickly as possible. Just because beacons are so, so handy. And if I can have lots of beacons kind of running through... Oh, hello. Uh, no, no. Oh, you are hitting hard. Yeah, like I was saying, if I can get lots of beacons in and around the world, it can get regeneration and all that going. It's going to make my gameplay that much easier, so I'm less likely to die, especially if I have regen. But this beacon, this beacon is for haste to only. Right, let's craft this beacon. We'll jump over to the iron farm and get a bunch of... Nope, we'll go sleep. So we'll jump over to the iron farm and get a bunch of iron. I can't remember the exact amount. I think it's three and a, is it three and a half stacks plus four. Three stacks and 36 is ringing a bell. I do not know. But we need the haste too for the cobblestone that we need to mine up. And then I'm going to pop that down right in the middle of our mining area. And it's going to let me mine so much deep slate because I need so much. I might even need to get a second beacon to even get finished with the amount of stuff that I need. So for me to have this bang smack in the middle of our mining area, I need to go all the way to the top of this hill just to mine down to the bottom in a straight line just so the beacon can come right through. Now, I did write in the chat here, 709, 709, minus 264, right here. 
I need to dig all the way down through here. All the way to the bottom. Perfect. So we're going to start from here and we need to go and we need to make a 9 by 9 square, basically. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here. And 1, 2, 3, 4. Hello. Oh. Yeah, that's going to dig into our staircase, but oh ah, well. Having a beacon right here is going to be better than anything. So this one has to be 9 by 9, the next layer is 7 by 7, and then the next one's 5 by 5, and then 3 by 3, and then the beacon. So now that we have that all mined out, I just need to fill in. And done. Beacon on. We want haste and haste 2 and an emerald to pay this. <sighs> And it's not really disrupting the, 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 the work area, so that's handy. So now that I have that in place, I need to start digging. The reason that I need to dig is because I need 11,000 deep slate. Not normal deep slate, cobbled deep slate. So I have to go and actually swap the pickaxe that we have to my fortune one because I have silk touch because I need cobbled and I need to get digging. Is, is it? No, it's 15,000. 15,000 cobbled deep slate. And this is all for the build next episode. Not even this episode. Next episode. Where I need a whopping 59,000 blocks for the build. And this is just one build. And it needed candles. It needs iron. It needs deep slate. <sighs> I've set myself up for a big one. But yes, I need to go and get digging. So... I need to go and get my stuff. And on that note, let the grind begin. If you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here and want to see what we do with all this deep slate, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!